Welcome to another episode of In The Zone. I am your host, Chris Broussard, and we've got another tremendous show for you. We interviewed Matt Barnes at his house in the Los Angeles area, had a great time with him. In fact, the interview went so well, went a little long, that we're gonna run the highlights on this podcast. That'll give you 20, 25 minutes. And then on Saturday, we will release the full interview in its entirety. You don't want to miss either one, especially when Matt and I had a Papa Shot contest and there was a surprising winner. I'll just leave it at that. But look, what you need to do is remember, go to iTunes, go to Apple Podcasts, go to SoundCloud and download In The Zone Give us five stars and leave a comment. And in addition to the Matt Barnes interview, you will get knocked down Jay. Yes, Jason McIntyre is back for that. And first, as always, we got to start with the top five. So this week, Carmelo Anthony, surefire Hall of Famer. He gets a lot of hate, but Carmelo had a great career. Is, Is having a great career. Anyway, Melo passed Jerry West, the logo to move into 20th place all time on the NBA scoring list. Now, we all know Carmelo has not won a championship. He became one of five players in the top 20 scoring to never have won a title. So that got me to thinking, who are the best five players of all time to never have won a championship? And I'm gonna throw a little twist on it. You could say, well, just take those five players in the top 20 scoring. What I'm going to say is I'm going to go by position. So who is the greatest player at every position, all five positions, to never have won an NBA championship? And I'm going to start with power forward. I've got to go with the mailman, Carl Malone. Now, this was tough because I have long thought that Charles Barkley was better than Carl Malone. But... I really analyzed it, really studied it, and I have to give the mailman the edge just because he had a much longer career. He played 19 years, Barkley played 16, but the mailman had a 17 year stretch where he averaged at least 20 points a game. Barkley's stretch of 20 points or more was only 11 seasons. Carl Malone, because of his longevity, is the second all-time leading scorer to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. More points than Kobe Bryant, more points than Wilt Chamberlain, more points than Michael Jordan. So I had to put him ahead of Sir Charles, who of course didn't win the championship either. So power forward, going with the mailman. Gotta throw this in, the only player in the top 12 scores of all time to never win a ring. I had to say that, Carl, sorry. At small forward, I'm gonna go with Elgin Baylor, edging out Dominique, the human highlight film, Wilkins. Elgin Baylor, look, he holds the record, along with his teammate Jerry West, for losing more finals than anybody else in history. That was eight. They lost them together. They were both playing for the Lakers. The difference is, of course, Jerry West did win one finals championship. Elgin Baylor never did. But hey, he still was an awesome player, top five or six small forward of all time. 27 points a game for his career. That's in the top five all time per game averages and still gave you 13 and a half boards as a small forward. That is incredible. I know they grabbed more rebounds back then, but still 13 and a half is impressive. Elgin Baylor, the greatest small forward never to win a ring. At center, this one was simple. Patrick Ewing. There's not even a close second. I mean, Dwight Howard, Bob Lanier. The thing is, all the other top 10 centers of all time, they won championships. Patrick never did. His legacy would be different. Look, he's an all-time great Hall of Famer. Everybody knows how great Ewing was. But Michael Jordan obviously kept him from winning the championship. But when Jordan retired for those two years, Ewing had a window. And he went to the finals with the Knicks, 1994, against the Houston Rockets, against Akeem Olajuwon. Now, Olajuwon really outplayed him in that series. Ewing averaged like 18 points, 12 rebounds, which was more than Olajuwon, but he only shot 36% from the floor. Olajuwon, 26 points in that series, like nine rebounds or something. But of course, came down to a game seven. Akeem was better. Most importantly, John Starks kind of, Struggle two for 18. If you had won that game, that's my point. 
he would, his legacy would be so much different. Even though he's already an all-time great, people would view him in a different light. But look, he's the best center never to win a championship. <laughs> At the shooting guard position, gotta go with my man, Allen Iverson over George Gervin, Reggie Miller, guys like that. AI, what can you say? The smallest guy ever to win a scoring title. And guess what? He won four of them. Then he led the league in steals three times. An MVP, an icon, a cultural icon, first to wear the braids. Some people say it was Sprewell, Latrell Sprewell. I am almost positive it was Allen Iverson wearing the cornrows. You know, hip hop brought, brought the merging of hip hop and NBA together. Iconic Allen Iverson, best shooting guard never to win a championship and the point guard position. This was probably the hardest one. And I am going with some name that may surprise you. He's still playing, in fact. Chris Paul over John Stockton. I like him better. I think he's better than Stockton. You know, over Steve Nash. Chris Paul, tremendous point guard. And look, the way the Rockets are playing right now with him and James Harden, he might get off this list. This year, we'll see. Maybe next year, who knows? But Chris Paul, tremendous point guard, has had some struggles in the clutch in the playoffs, but has also had big moments in the playoffs. Phenomenal player, not only does it offensively with the passing, running the offense, gives you 19 points a game for his career, 18.7, something like that. Defensively, one of the best point guard defenders that we've had in the league. He has led the league in steals a record six times. That is not to be trifled with. So Chris Paul, the greatest point guard never to win a championship. <laughs> All right, here we are back. Welcome back, man. Back and better than ever. How was Hawaii? Hawaii was excellent. You, get, some you NBA? don't look any darker. You didn't get a tan. I'm dark. You don't look, you look like your normal color. Okay. Thank you. You didn't get I am SPF. Did you lay out? No, man. I'm an under the umbrella guy. Oh, Come really? on now. All right. Well, you yeah. had a good time. I you, did you, have an you excellent recouped. time. You your bruises healed and all oh, that stuff. Stop from, it. Stop from the it. Beatings, I've been reading NBA. Said. I'm ready to go. Okay, okay. Well, of course, it's another segment of Knockdown Jay with my man, Jason McIntyre. He's gonna hit me with three points, and I'm going to Knock no, them down. Please. All right, what you got? All right, let's start off in Oklahoma City where uh, your OKC Thunder, can I say that? Your OKC Thunder? They're struggling. The big stat to look at here since Andre Roberson left, they are 1-7 against teams that are currently in the playoffs. This team is floundering. Roberson. 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 I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> I got to say, it's looking more and more like they're not going to be a top four seed. It's looking more and more like, hey, this team's going out in the first round. And it's looking more and more like Paul George, okay. adios, Russ. And I've agree. got to ask you, we saw Kevin Durant leave Russell Westbrook two years ago. They said, oh, he needs a star. He gets a star in Paul George. They're not winning. I believe Russell Westbrook's legacy, I know he's, what, 28, 29, it's early to talk legacy. Year, something like that. You've had two top 15 NBA stars leave you in the last two years. I think his legacy is going to be completely damaged what? if Paul George indeed leaves him after this season. Let me tell you what Russell Westbrook's legacy is going to be, oh, yeah. regardless of what Paul George is. Okay. Hall of Famer. Ooh. Icon. Okay? Icon. They will be talking about Russell Westbrook 25, 30 years from now as, guess what, the only player other than Oscar Robertson to average a triple-double. It wasn't LeBron James, it wasn't Jason Kidd, it wasn't Magic Johnson, it was Russell Westbrook. He may not win a title, but guess what? May not Allen win Iverson a title. doesn't have a title. Charles he got Bar to the finals Charles, by himself. Charles Barkley doesn't have a title. Getting there don't mean nothing. He Charles tried Barkley to ring doesn't have a title. In Houston and Patrick, Ring does, Patrick Ewing doesn't have a title. He got to the finals. A lot of great players. Steve Nash has his legacy. Did he even ever get to the Hold finals? Up. Was Steve Hold Nash on. a lottery pick? Did Steve Nash forget lottery What do you mean forget lottery pick? Steve Nash Westbrook. was undersized. He was a great underdog story oh, who was he's tremendous. He's a two-time two MVP. Time MVP. So yeah. why didn't he? He never went to the finals. You, you Is his legacy? No. He, are you kidding? You cannot two mention time Steve MVP. Nash and Russell Westbrook. Two-time MVP. Time. Yeah. I would say Steve Nash had a better career than Russell Westbrook. Oh, stop it. Two-time MVP. Stop How it. many Russell Westbrook got? One. Is he getting any more? He might. 
He might average a triple double. He's not again. even in the discussion, and something he's having that, another good something season. Something that we never thought somebody would do. This guy might do it twice. Oh, stop! And, and who knows? Yeah, we saw how forward. hollow it and was. Let me hit you with this. They got bounced in the first here's, round. Last here's year. what I'm tired of. I'm tired of the likes of you and others. All right, this notion that Russell Westbrook is not a winner. That Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant were this disaster. First of all, they got to the finals. They got to the finals. As children. Lost to a great D-Wade, LeBron, with James Chris Harden. Bosch that, team. that was a team, by the way, with three future MVPs. Kevin yeah, Durant, but they were James all Harden, kids. But they still got to the finals. Then you look, look at the – study it. The years they didn't get to the Western there Conference injuries, Finals. injuries, I know. Durant yep. was out, or Westbrook was out, or Serge Ibaka was out. Oh, no, Serge Ibaka. When, yeah. Well, that's a key part of your team. Yeah. My point is, when they and then they're healthy. They got a 73-win Golden State team down, 3-1. Now, Westbrook wasn't great in 6-7, and seven, but neither was Durant. So don't put that loss okay. all on Russell Westbrook. You know Westbrook. what he's omitting, my, no, no, let me finish. My point is this. If Durant had gone back to OKC. Okay, well, there's a reason he didn't go back. And, don't, and that's why Paul George yeah. is not going to go back. Who, who was the first guy you heard say he was going to Golden State? I don't know. Me. And I said it because Kevin Durant loved the way the Warriors played. Yes, it not wasn't, the way Russell Westbrook played. Nobody plays. else plays like Golden State. It wasn't just Russ, Russell Westbrook. It was, I love the way that team plays. And guess what? Cleveland doesn't play that way. The Lakers don't play that way. Houston didn't play. Nobody played okay. that way. So you can so play that argument on Kevin Westbrook. Durant going to the Warriors. All of what are you going to say has not been when a loser. Paul George says, peace, Let him I'm go. Out. Oh, Let him go. Paul George, hold on. Let me show you about Paul George. <laughs> Tell me. And I like Paul George. No, I, I'm waiting. But, but since you acting like he's on Russell Westbrook level. Is he Westbrook's not a top 15 level, player in the league? He ain't Russell Westbrook. Is he Let's a top 15 play, player? Is he equal to Russell Westbrook? He don't want to play with is Westbrook. He, is he equal They're not to, winning. Is he equal to Russell Westbrook? No. Paul George, hold on. Time out. Paul George carried the Pacers to two. To seventh and eighth seeds. Two Eastern. first round exits. No, I- incorrect. Two Eastern Conference Finals against LeBron. That was Roy when- Hibbert's team. Oh, skip that. <laughs> <laughs> See? He's back That's into a, a corner. No, I know. Okay, fine. But Paul George carried two teams to the Eastern Conference Finals. Russell Westbrook, when Durant left, has not gotten out of the first round. This is the second oh, year. Let me, let me, I'm uh, just saying. Uh, let's, Paul let's, George's out. Don't want to play with hold him. Hold on. What did Kevin Durant do without Russell Westbrook? Well, I, uh, Not in Golden wanna... State, because he got everybody in Golden State. When, when Westbrook was out in 2013, guess what? Second round, 4-1 loss to Memphis. Second round, at least. 4-1 Second loss. Second round. All up, look, Durant's better than Westbrook. I would hope he would say but that. Don't, my thing is this. Every, you acting like Russell Westbrook is this loser. This dude is going to be an icon. He, okay, we, we're not arguing that. We are, because you talking about his legacy he is going to be shot. You don't think people, the superstars, Hold not on. wanting to play with him doesn't damage him? Did Lakers? Kyrie Irving want to play with LeBron James? Yeah, but that's a little. We're talking about LeBron oh, James. Did Kyrie, oh, come on. Does that you ruin just, LeBron's legacy? You're you won a championship with this dude, and you still can't get out of no, town no. fast they enough. They made Cleveland Kyrie's team when they drafted him. It was his team. It was his show. Then they bring in LeBron. It's not your show anymore. It's so LeBron. what? You was winning 19 games as your show. Yeah, exactly. 25 he, games. He, uh, when he's 20 he years old. Happy. He's 20 years old. You got to give him a chance. All right, listen. We got to. You're, you're dodging the question. What does it mean? I, I'm not dodging okay, the question. Answer, I told you. Me, Icon, Hall of Famer. No, nothing at so all. You don't it does think to his that legacy. Kevin Durant and Paul George leaving him? Not a big deal. You're just saying it doesn't matter. It's not in the first sentence did of his Kyrie, basketball bio. Did oh heck, he not ain't no no way. The first sentence of his basketball bio is already average written. a triple double. Yes. Okay. What's Second number two? player ever to average What's a triple two? double. MVP. Oh. Uh, no, no, Hall that was the first one. Hall no. of Fame. No, no, no. no. One of Why the greatest the title? cards we've you ever seen. You know you only talk about titles. That's all that matters. No, it's not all that That's matters. That's the number one I thing we talk about. I give Allen Iverson love, Charles Barkley, you can. Steve Nash, hold on, hold on. Patrick time out, time Ewing. Out. And if you're not going to come down on Steve Nash, when you win the MVP. Time out. Yeah, hold on. You, a responsibility on, on. comes with MVP. Gotcha, okay. Win a championship. Did Steve Nash even get to the Allen finals? Allen Iverson. No. So if you don't care, you don't kill Russ. The 76ers to the finals. Were his, who was his second best player? Dikembe Mutombo. Oh, my gosh. Who, is he in the Hall of Fame? He might. Russell Westbrook close, can't not, get out of the first it. round. 
It's last been two. Year. Hold on. How many years did, did Allen Iverson not get out of the first Russell round? West, Several. Trust Russell me. Westbrook is shooting Some, they didn't 28% even make the playoffs. from deep this He's year. He's never been a three-point shooter. And That's he's not 29 years old. His I'm telling you. His career is 30%. From here for he's Russell not Westbrook. a three-point shooter. Okay, we, I, That's I mean, your argument told, that he I, can't shoot threes? Guess what? Well, what's he going to rely on when the athleticism goes like it has gone for Blake Griffin? If the athleticism goes in his 13th year... And 13. he can't do it anymore. That's a longer career than Magic Johnson, Larry Bird. Ah. Come on, I mean, what do you expect? Those guys never they relied Isaiah on Thomas. athleticism. My ever. point is just that he's already had a long enough oh career. All right. He's in his 10th year. Hey, Paul George, hit me on Instagram. You, I you can't better wait be happy to get the CNLA You better be happy Jay, that uh, 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 Josh Goldman didn't hear the judge. We're not going to have anybody score I this? I smashed it. Oh, my. <laughs> you got anybody? This is like a 4 0 sweep. With yeah, oh, there we go. Here it. we go. You, you, he ain't the judge, man. <laughs> next up. Next Who is up. That? What is he doing here? Here we go. Next up. Uh, Anthony Davis. Now, he's injured at the time of this podcast, which just stinks. Although it's become a recurring theme a with Anthony games. Davis. Yeah. Okay. He is in, I believe, his sixth season. He's only 24, which is absurd. He's one of the best players in the league. Yeah. Okay. I believe he's number two in the league in PER player efficiency rating right now. Probably runner up to MVP, second, third. However, they ain't going nowhere. Okay. This team's going out in the first round. This team doesn't have DeMarcus Cousins until at least the All Star break next year. We've never seen a guy of his weight at his stage in his career come back strong. Elton Brand came back, and it wasn't very good. Bottom line is, this year seems shot for the Pelicans. Next year, capped out, seems shot. I wonder, Chris, do the Pelicans talk to Anthony Davis and say, Anthony, we love you, but if you're open to a trade, we would be willing to move you and restart. Hey, what, what's the matter here? You... Am I on, like, getting, am I getting punked? There's no punk here. Am I getting, uh, candid camera, I'm taking it back to the 70s. Candid camera. I don't know what that punk, is. Some, like, what? Okay, Anthony the, Davis. Hold on, the Pelicans should go to Anthony Davis <laughs> Here we go. and say we love you, but we want to move on. What? Well, if, uh, hey, listen, when you can't, when you try to trade Anthony Davis two years from now, when he says, I'm out, I want to be out. Let me give you a let Kevin me, Garnett. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me put your phone down. Don't go texting nah, Anthony Davis. You speculating. Well, right, no, you, here's why. You, you ain't even speculating. You just making up foolish no, this thoughts, is imagination. I mean, I'm in reality. You don't want to deal with reality. Let me ask you this. Anthony Davis, two years from now, hasn't gotten out of the first round. He's got one year left on his contract, a player option. He ain't staying in New Orleans. What are you getting for him at that point? Why don't you entertain? I'm not saying you have to. Entertain the idea. Hey, man, you're willing to give us a couple first-round picks and a couple potential stars? We'll and what Anthony am Davis. I trying to get with those first-round picks? You're trying to get younger guys who you're going to you have on the books for the next five years. what I'm trying to get with those first-round picks? If I got three first-round picks, you know what I'm hoping one of them becomes? Anthony Davis. Yes. Yes. So why in the world would I trade him? He's 24, 24. not 34. And let me read you this quote just from a few weeks ago. Okay. Anthony Davis, I'm here yeah. <laughs> until 2021. Woo! 2021. We players what say year is it? What year is it right now? Uh, 20, what if 2018? That's 24? three years. I'm here in New Orleans until 2021, and then I'll make a decision from there. Mm. I don't plan on leaving in the next couple of years or anything like that. I've always said I wanted to be here. Yes. And that's still. What's he going to say, Chris? What's he going to say? He Let doesn't me... have to say all that. He can say, hey, you know, when, when, when it comes up, it'll come up. Okay. But, you know, well, he doesn't you, have to be You know like what else that. he said? So Kevin Garnett recently was asked, man, you, you kind of wallowed in Minnesota. They did have a good playoff run. Got to the fi Western Conference Finals, I believe. Once. Yes. Kevin Garnett then gets traded to the Celtics where he enjo enjoys a, what, an awesome three-year yeah, run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, KG, do you kind of wish you had gotten to the Celtics sooner? And he says, yeah. Imagine if I got there five years earlier. Remember, he was in Minnesota struggling, that fight uphill. Anthony Davis was asked about that and was saying, and I believe the exact quote is, yes, you think about that. You're telling me he doesn't think. You think about that versus what I just read to you. Well, he's got to say here. that. He's I want to be here. Oh, but he doesn't have to say you think about the, it. I mean, don't give me, no, nah, look. 
There is absolutely no reason whatsoever for New Orleans to even entertain trading him. If, if in your scenario in 2021, he wants to leave, that gives me at least two Trust years. Me. Kyrie Irving hold gave on. them heads up. Hold on, in hold, on hold on. Let me. That gives me. At, Paul George gave at them the heads up. At the very least, at the very least, I would play out next season and see how it goes. And you acting like. Go, hold on, man. hold on. You acting There's like no this. There's no hope for this you, team. Really? They oh, just, I forgot. Oh, Your boy Drew me, Holiday okay. is on They've fire. They've won 10 straight games yes. in the West. It's been impressive. He's in an the MVP West. Candidate. Don't mock it. Don't mock no, it. No, it's been in impressive. In the West, they won 10 straight yes. games. They are, they are, obviously they're not Golden State or Houston. But right now, they're right there with everybody else. No, they are? Yes. They're going to win a playoff game. They're four seed right now. Right yeah, now, win in, a playoff in, game. in five days, win they a playoff could be out game. of the playoffs. That's and how here, close it is. Here's my point. You Drew Holiday, you just mocked no, him. No, he's averaging 19 Drew Holiday he looks great is playing this year. well. He's Rajon Rondo is playing well. We know that's got a shelf life. He, what else you Nicola got? Nikola Mirotic. How's Solomon Hill doing? Nikola making millions Miritich of dollars. Nikola Mirotic is playing he's well. Playing well. 15 points a game. He might, he might, try, he might Moore. get punched out by a team. Etwan again. Moore is playing well. Oh, come on now. My point is this. This is a young team. If they make the first off, they just make the playoffs. That's a success. That would be I would And they will feel good about themselves. If they go out and win a few playoff games, or God, let alone a series, they're really going to feel good about themselves. Are they a contender? No. But for you to sit here and act like they're not going anywhere, they feel like if they get in the playoffs and win a round, that's win a going round. somewhere. And Anthony Chris, Davis win was, a round? Why like, can't come they? Come back to reality, Chris. Did you go crazy in New York? What is win it? a round? Can they win a game in could, the postseason? Could they beat, that's it. Could one they game. Beat. That's it. One game. What if they get the Clippers? How, stop. What if they get Denver? So, will you get back to reality, no. Chris? What if they get a Minnesota team oh without Jimmy Butler? I mean, seriously, they can't beat those teams? The reality Hold is. Hold on. Tell me why they can't beat those teams. The reality. Tell me why they can't reality, beat those teams. Over here, Jason McIntyre, reality land. They're going to be playing Houston or Golden State. That's what's probably going to happen. You have to finish seventh or eighth to play Houston or Golden yeah, State. Anthony Davis right is now, hurt at this moment. Two or three games. They're two games out of being out of the playoffs. So is everybody else. Exactly. My, my, they can move out and then they, they miss. They could. They could fall oh, down. you're no a glass question. half full kind of guy, no, right? I'm okay. just saying they got as good a shot as anybody to finish between three and eight. And you're right. If, and they, nine, go, three and if nine. they go seven or eight, they're going to get bounced early, Boom. obviously. And I love but, Anthony Davis. Hold on, when they, I want like the best of the best players. This. When they met Golden State a few years ago, they got swept. It was close. But it was a competitive sweep. Yeah, I thought they would get a game. And so all I'm saying is if I'm New Orleans, it is way too early. I'm not – this whole trade for Anthony Davis stuff has got to stop because oh, okay. there's no – he's not available. He's not available. He's locked up until at least 2020, if not 2021. I'm not even entertaining okay. trade calls until a year or okay. two from now. I'm going to quote the philosopher – Ted DiBiase, the million dollar man, <laughs> legendary wrestler. Everybody has a price, okay? And when you call up, you're Danny Ainge, you call up, hey, hey, what do you want for Anthony? I would just say, I would ask, you have to ask that. It's Danny Ainge's job to he do can that. He do it? It's, it's the job why, of the it, Lakers, why of does, Magic why Johnson. Does, why does that hey, front office have I'm, to listen? I'm Magic Johnson. Man, Anthony Davis off the hook? Yeah, okay, so who you giving me? <sighs> Couple couple ones in the future. We'll give you Lonzo. We'll give you Ingram. I'm what? I got I'm just saying, Anthony that's your job. Davis. That's your job. Every one of these first, these first round picks are so overhyped. Oh really? Yes, because uh -huh. most of them don't even pan out. How's Markel Fultz doing? <laughs> How's Malik playing? Monk doing? How's Josh Malik Jackson Monk. and oh, De'Aaron uh, Fox and all them doing? How bad Malik Monk been in Charlotte? I feel bad. Man, for I'm him just a saying, they like got a these, situation there. These, 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 look, I'm not. If I'm New Orleans, I got my man. And I'm not even thinking about moving. By the way, thinking of the first round picks, how, how's Kyle Kuzma doing? Huh? How's he doing in LA? I, I, oh, 15 I, points a game. I don't have to trade there for a go. 27th pick. I got a pick. I got a low pick. Yeah, you're missing out on the picks Look, all the time. I know you a Boston fan, <laughs> and you want nothing more than Anthony Davis in Boston. No. But if you, who you got? You better not go Wait, with no, no, Chris, Chris, Chris with he's not mic'd up and there's no camera on him. But Chris, uh, again, I got to look at this. I was about uh, to have a okay, new producer. Fine, up in this on some level, 
Do you feel a little bad for Anthony Davis? No, why? Jeez. All right, let's move on. Hold on, why? I want to see the best players in the playoffs. He's going to be awesome in the playoffs. playoffs. Players on their team doing damage. How about building it? There are still some players that want to build something. Okay, yeah, everybody's Barkley not going to just something. run to another team. Yeah, and how's that? How'd that work out? Great. Okay, Hall yeah. of Fame career, one of the best power forwards right, ever. Anthony Davis have a Hall of Fame career and never won a title. That would suck. Okay, moving on. Third topic. Maybe we'll get you a win here, Chris. I know you're struggling out of the gate. Um, oh, this is, I love this question. So, Damian Lillard is on fire. Yes. I mean, he is torching the league. He torched the Lakers a couple nights ago. And he's in the MVP discussion. He's probably yes. going to finish top six, seven, maybe? Five. Well, maybe it's top only five? five. It's only a five. Oh, it's just five. Okay. Yeah. I thought ten people got votes. You, they, they do top five. Okay, so he'll. I mean, he it might be some other five. guys getting votes, but yeah. But Kyrie Irving in Boston has been tremendous. He has led the Celtics to the number two seed with a lot of young pups on that team. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna make a statement. I'm gonna leave this open ended. If you're starting a team today, who are you starting with, Damian Lillard or Kyrie Irving? That's a very tough. Well, let me I add mean, the you, ages. You, Damian Lillard turns 28 in July. Kyrie Irving turns 26 this well, month. Well, so Kyrie maybe, two years yeah, younger. the age, that could be the deciding factor. Right. Certainly. I mean, honestly, like, these guys are both very closely matched. Look, they're both great scores, great scores. Lillard, mm, pff, probably slightly more of a score, slightly better score, even though Kyrie shoots a higher percentage. For, and from and three. Higher from three. I was shocked at that. Yep. But 40 I think, to 37, yeah, Kyrie. Yeah, Lillard might be a slightly better score. And honestly, neither one of them is a huge assist guy, but Lillard is a slightly better assist guy. Yeah, yeah. Lillard's about six and a half this year assist, about over six for his career. Kyrie's at five for his career, but five this year. But that's tough because LeBron was. But even kind before, of the I mean, he's look, he's without LeBron right now. He's five assists a game. Yeah, no, certainly. He's he, for most of the year. Al Horford was their leading assist guy. I mean, he's playing with guys who are twenty years old. The Brad Stevens offense, like before LeBron and Cleveland. Granted, young players then, but still, Ky Kyrie's never been a high assist guy. Now maybe that'll change. And Lillard hadn't been. But hugely the point, high, the point guard position has kind of morphed into we need you to score, not be ten. Well, there assists, are guys you know? that score and assist. John John Wall, Russell Westbrook. John Wall, 19 a game. You ever These heard guys of Russell are 24, Westbrook? 26. Uh, we're not talking about that uh, guy. Yeah, he don't, he don't get it. So, uh, but he you're, do you're dodging on. the question no, like you look, were ducking me last honestly, week. Honestly, this who is a got? no. You, you can't lose because they're both outstanding. So who you got? Um, I probably. Wait, let me, both, oh, we forgot. Both defensively, relatively, who you got defensively. They're both pretty poor defensively. Okay. Lillard's ranks, ranks as slightly better than Kyrie. But uh, gun to my head. I probably take, man, that's a probably take Lillard. Oh, slightly. Okay, but slight it's, disagreement. I'm, I'm happy with either yeah. one. I mean, it's tough. That's so a tough one. The other reason is uh, that I have a problem with this. How do you judge Kyrie? He goes from being with LeBron and several questionable coaches to Brad Stevens, and Brad Stevens' offense, like you said, Al Horford led them in assists yeah. for a while. Uh, I'm shocked that Kyrie's a better shooter. We know he's a better finisher around the room. There's almost no better finisher uh, in the yeah, NBA right yeah, now. Yeah, tremendous finisher. I, I can't find an area that Lillard is demonstrably better. Although I will say at the There's end of games. There's not one where he's, he's demonstrably better. Right, at the end of games, he's lights out. But so is Kyrie. Kyrie has also, because he hit game he's seven. He's the freaking game, same seven so, of the freaking So a, a player efficiency rating, 25 to 24, Kyrie's slight advantage. I, I think both these guys, we talked about this before, both guys will make all NBA probably second team, unless DeRozan squeezes in there. But right now, the NBA point guards are, I would say, better than they've ever been. The depth is tremendous. When John Wall is not even a top five point guard, okay? Right? We well, would That's your, I mean, you got, you got, yeah, Curry? you got Curry, Harden, Westbrook. Dame, Kyrie. Lillard, Kyrie. I mean, look, Lillard, Kyrie, Wall, they're going to rotate. Ben one, Simmons next year is on the come better. up right yeah. now. I mean, Ben Simmons going to be there. The position is tremendous. I will say this, though. The change in the game Back in the 80s, point guards were feed, post-feeding big men. Pass okay, if they yeah. had shot as much, if, if their offense was, I get to dominate the ball and dribble all I want and, you know, shoot as much as I want, we don't have a four or five man that's going to score 20 points a game, then a lot of them might would put up similar numbers. So I don't, I don't know if it, it may just be that the emphasis of the game has changed from big to small and three-point line from post to three-pointer. That may be what has them playing better. Look, they're great. 
We, but we, I don't know that they're necessarily better. I just like than this, this, this matchup. That's a tough so one. Much. That, and I will you, say, you would have a hard time picking a closer matchup. Yes, it is than amazing. Those two because they're uh, really close. Uh, would it push you toward Kyrie if the Celtics make a run to the Eastern Conference Finals? Because again, this team without I, Gordon I Hayward is very them to make a run to the Eastern Conference Finals. I mean, if they lose, they're going to play. If they lose to Toronto, I don't know if they could meet Toronto in the second round or whatever. I, I wouldn't be. Sh- Sh- well, I, I wouldn't be down would play on three. them. So I they would be play down LeBron on them. in the second round right now. Boston would. Well, if they beat the Cavs, well, then it's Kyrie hands down. But can they beat the kid? Look, can Kyrie beat LeBron? I don't know LeBron? if it's hands down because look, the East is so much weaker. You know, well, than it's the, better than, than, than the, it was last the, year. Uh, really? You don't think the Sixers well, with Embiid and Simmons? But that's at the bottom. That's you not. Think, I'm talking about at the top. Those teams are going to push some guys. You still have one elite team, and that's Cleveland. You think they're elite? I, I don't they're, think so. I think it's Warriors and Rockets up here. Then the second I'll give you level. That, the presence of LeBron and athletic role players and shooters around him makes them elite. Okay. All right, but I, I will I, agree Cleveland I, I, if they're in the West. I will actually concede struggle. that this was a split. Uh, this was a, I, I'll give you a point. I get a point here, so I win. Um, First of all, is you. it your podcast? <laughs> no, it's not. You lucky but you even in that scene. in YouTube I are make all the, about, I, like, more I give McIntyre. the point. I we give the point. Really? I think they're saying that. Yeah, yeah all right. All Jay right. Mac. Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Look, this was you. Oh, damn. This is me. Cold Standing blooded. tall. Good job. All right. Hey, you, oh, I, by I, the way, I, let me I get in this. Let me get in a quick question here. Are you going to Cavs Lakers this weekend? I'm going to be out of town, so I wouldn't. Oh, no. Yeah. I thought are you, you would have dinner with Maverick and LeBron. No, are you going? I may. I may be going. All right. Be you going LeBron, your, you're going to wear your Lank, Lakers Lake, tank no, top? No, no, no. My, with, with my James kids will be the wearing back. their LeBron jerseys. You're going to have a James on the back LeBron already. LeBron to L.A., baby. It's happening. <laughs> All right. For Knockdown J, I'm Chris Broussard, my man Jason McIntyre. Catch you next week. All right, here we go with a special on-the-road edition of In the Zone with Matt Barnes, man. man. We at your house in the man, L.A. area. It. Man, no. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for having us over here. Like the, the Tupac shirt. Yes. And That's my guy. You got some great art yeah. all over the place. Yeah. Tu- you, Tupac, your favorite rapper? Tupac is my favorite human. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, definitely rapper. But I just think, he, you know, he was so much more than a rapper. Um, but, yeah, I just have cool. I'm a big fan of kind of helping people expand their brand and their business. So yeah. I find local artists off Instagram kind of all over the United States. And now they want to send me stuff, but I'll buy stuff and post for them and kind of help grow their gathering and get yeah. other athletes to do the same thing. So I was fortunate enough to have some cool stuff. Yeah, that's some great stuff, man. Great shots. Um, so you reach out to people. You just reach out yeah, to them? Yeah, I'll DM they them. They must be shocked. I'll DM, yeah, they are, definitely. <laughs> it, it's really cool, you know what I mean? Because, you know, they're really authentic. And I just think music and art are just something I wish I can do. It, I, it, it's such a creative space and uh like i said i just love being able to help people are you into like do you do any art or music or anything like I that? i buy it and listen to it yeah that's about that's it. it you, know, you never I, rapped or anything no, back I, in the day? I respect I, I respect the craft too much to try to cross over like that you know so man, even back music. in the day though when never. you was a kid you didn't run never no i just knew i was an athlete that's what yeah. i did so i wasn't i respect each craft too much to try to cross over and, and do some stuff, stuff like that because i don't have the time to be good at it yeah what do you think about the players that rap some guys can really rap you know, some guys could like Dame Lillard could really, Lilla really rap. You know, Stephen Jackson could really rap. You yeah. know, if it's something you can do, do it. It just wasn't really for me. Yeah, yeah. You heard Lonzo's mixtape? Yeah, he, yeah. He, I haven't. I just heard snippets, but uh, you know, I like it. You know, so, what I mean, if he, he's a talented kid, man, and I, and I and I really think the basketball side is starting to show, and I'm happy for him. He's playing well. Yeah. Yeah. Is that? I mean, you play with a lot of great players. Having a teammate like that, I don't want to compare it to the greats that you <clears> play with. But having a guy that's straight trying to pass and get mm-hmm. you involved, how much do guys enjoy that? It's special. It's special to be, to be able to affect the game without necessarily scoring a bunch of points. You know, it takes a special individual. You know, I was blessed to play with a lot of them. Um, Steve Nash, uh, Chris Paul, um, guys that really can do either or but or would rather pass. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So someone like Lonzo is... A special talent and I think he kind of got it off to a slow start because one it's just a new experience he's 1920 
But then all the trash talking with his dad in the world, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So I think everything's kind of simmered down and you're starting to see him kind of get it a little bit, but he's going to be a special player. You got two boys. They play? Yeah. Uh, they're young. I know yeah. nine, right? Yeah. Twins? Yeah. Will you be like a LeVar Ball dad? Or? No. I mean, I don't <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I like what LeVar is doing. I mean, he loves his boys, you yeah. know what I mean? And he realized he has something special. You know, I don't agree with everything he does, but I'd much rather be there doing that than yeah. not be around doing nothing. Yeah. Uh, my boys, I'm different, you know, to each their own. Um, you know, I just have a different way of going about it and, and motivating them and getting them to do stuff and teaching them about life. You know what I mean? So, uh, but I'm definitely going to be a dad that's very hands on. So we were talking earlier <laughs> um, before we got on the camera. Kevin Love came out with a big article today in the Players Tribune. Really good article, insightful about kind of mental illness among athletes. And he said he had a couple panic attacks during games. And um, he's seeing a therapist and stuff. And you were saying how, you know, people don't appreciate yeah. what athletes oh, man. go through. We go through a lot. And I think that because we make a lot of money, people just expect us to be superhuman. Mm -hmm. And we're not. We're, we're just like everyone else. We just happen to be good at something that, you know, pays a lot. But I can completely understand. I saw, you know, with Kevin and with DeMar DeRozan speaking mm -hmm. on it, I, I think throughout sports, because <clears throat> we, especially in basketball, you know, I played through the death of my mom. The day after my mom died, I played uh, just to kind of, wow. you know, stay, get it off my mind. I went through a very public divorce. I went through a very public fight with Derek Fisher, you know, mm -hmm. but, but, but all this and people are saying good, bad and indifferent. I'm still dealing with emotions all inside, but, it, but I have to be able to put those away because I'm, I'm playing basketball still. You know what I mean? So we have to kind of suppress a lot of things. and. A lot of times it doesn't get to come to the surface and, you know, you'll see one of us either go off or go into a depression or go into, you know, you don't know what direction people go. So it's it's definitely a serious issue in pro sports. Do coaches, I mean, are you able to go talk to anybody? It's or? hard. Yeah. I think it's hard because as a man, you don't want to admit you have, you know, it's kind of yeah. like a pride thing. Yeah. You know, I, but I can't really, because I've, I've been fortunate enough to never have it. You know, I've had, <laughs> I've had anger issues up and down, <laughs> but I, I've never had an anxiety attack or really had any type of depression. You know what I mean? I just, I dealt with my stuff a different way, but I, so I can't speak to their nature, but it's just tough, you know, it, it, but I definitely something that needs to be talked about and addressed. And I'm glad these guys are brave enough to do it. Yeah, it, it really is good. Um, so you retired in officially in December. Mm -hmm. um, what if, what's the one thing that stood out to you about the league since you've retired? Anything in particular? The refs. God, so what's, yeah, so what's the deal? bad, man. They're so, <laughs> so bad. The I just, players aren't just bugging. No, I just, now that I'm not in it and I'm not emotionally tied to it, I, I still get so irritated by refs because I, <laughs> I think it's so much ego they have. I think it's a prideful thing. And with all due respect, they're doing a very tough job. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. Their job is tough. But it's to the point where you can't say anything to them. You know what I mean? Especially these young refs. I mean, they're so tea happy. You know what I mean? And you got to think, you have kids, you know, and I have kids. I know when my kids are getting excited to watch a game or go to a game that night, they're not saying, Daddy, I can't wait to go see these refs give players <laughs> teas. Like, they're going to say, I can't go get ready to see KD or yeah, Steph yeah. or LeBron. Like, they, they want to see these players. And these refs are taking everything so personal and teeing these people out and throwing them out messing up the whole flow of the game, it, just, it really bothers me. So that's a lot different from when you came. Right, and it bothered me. I mean, I lost a lot of money <laughs> while I was playing because of it. But now that I have, you know, I'm completely disconnected, the refs are terrible. So the Warriors, the atmosphere you were just describing, you never felt that anywhere else? I felt it the first time around in Golden State, but we weren't ready for it. Mm -hmm. We didn't know what it was. Management wasn't ready for it. Like, we had a bond on a different type of level that this team has. But we had, it was just, it was crazy, but it was a bond, you know what I mean? But I felt maybe it's the city, you know what I mean? <laughs> maybe it's the city that gets behind you because the city is so proud of you and they, you always want to put on for the city. But um, those two Warrior teams were the two closest teams I've ever had where there was no ego from any of the stars and everybody just wanted to win. What was it like? Cause you, when you went there, they had KD. <clears throat> and Steph and those like how what was that dynamic like I mean you got two probably the top three players in the in it the was world. amazing to see that everyone just wanted to win despite what you mentioned you know, and you know coach coach Kerr is a, is a rock star in his own sense you know mm -hmm. from being one of just a cool laid back someone that the players like because he speaks up not only about basketball but life in general mm -hmm. to, you know the good guy so everyone had their own little 
on not they didn't travel in entourage but they all had their big own fan bases you know what i mean so to bring all those guys under one roof and be able to get them to just want to play basketball for one another and love each other and know that the common goals and we all do our jobs we're going to win a championship is amazing you, know, you got kd who's the mvp you got steph who's the mvp you got clay who's going to go down as one of the greatest shooters ever you got draymond who is an underdog but to me if you lose him there's no warriors you know what i mean mm. so you got so many different amazing aspects to that team and they can come together like this for the common goal of them. Is Draymond the <clears throat> inspirational leader? There's no question. For the whole organization. <laughs> really? Not just the team. He holds everybody accountable. Like, I, he talks to the owner. He'll say something to the coaches, to the management. <laughs> he'll get in Steph's ass, he'll get in KD's ass. And that's what you need. You need someone that, because in this game, there's so many people that are, you know, yes men to you and this. Mm -hmm. and. That's not how you, you know, this is, we're men, this is not how you're gonna make it work. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? You need real in your life. And Draymond gives them all real. And he also gives us just a sense of I got your back type situation. That's why he and I bonded so well and we still talk, <clears throat> you know, weekly almost. It's just like we, the way we have our teammates back and, and, and the confidence they have when we're out there on the court with us is just like, it, it's, you know, you can do your job because anything else I got. Yeah. And Draymond, you know, Steph, do your job. Katie, do your job because anything else I got. You know what I mean? So when when the media, when we see him on TV yelling at teammates or whatever, and the media responds like, "Oh, they gonna get tired of that." No. They don't know. It's not. No, anything. Draymond is probably one of the most loved person in that locker room. <laughs> you know, to me, Draymond is gonna be someone like a, and this is no disrespect because Chuck's intelligent, but just a, a different form of Chuck, like just a more versed version mm -hmm. of Charles Barkley when he's mm -hmm. done playing like he's a he's a very personable very well spoken articulate can hold conversations in, in any realm of life uh, you know he's just a real deep dude but what you see is a competitor like you saw of me yeah. so you're going to see me cussing the other team out <clears throat> getting a tackle foul yelling at my teammates sometimes or getting back and forth with my teammates or getting into my coach because we're just passionate mm -hmm. but at the same time we're still the person that you know everyone rallied around now you had a rep you mentioned it earlier thug tough guy you know bully you had that reputation as one of the tougher guys in the league how do you think that came about um i just <laughs> it's funny because i think because people think like because the way i look you know they because i've been a called pretty a pretty boy, boy you know yeah, what i mean yeah. but people don't know the way i grew up you know what i mean like i said my dad was a drug dealer so i've seen my dad do some crazy stuff you know what i mean and my dad always fought and the one thing he taught me at an early age was protect your family at all costs. So if my brother or sister got in a fight, I fought no matter what. Mm -hmm. And if I didn't, I was going to get my ass whooped when I went home. So mm -hmm. I just grew up fighting, always. You so know you, what I mean? you got in a lot of fights. Lots of fights. And then when I first started going to school, so we lived in a bad neighborhood, but my parents always put me in white schools, and I didn't like it at the time. I'm, 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 I'm Italian and black, okay. but I consider myself a black man because of the way I've been treated and, and, and the path I've taken with the racism I yeah. faced. But my parents would put me in white schools and I didn't like it because I used, my friends were Mexican and black and I didn't really know how to, you know, verse with, with white kids early on, like third grade, I can remember when I first got to Sacramento and it was just, <clears throat> I wasn't white enough and I wasn't black enough, so I was just always fighting. And how I really started be getting accepted was because I was the best at all the sports, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I was always the best at everything, so that's when people kind of gave me a chance to even be accepting of me and then once they got a chance to know me it was I still have friends from third grade okay you know what I mean okay. so it's just once they gave me a chance so I've just always grew up rough and then I just hap <laughs> happen to look like this you know what I mean <laughs> so people oh, he's fake or he's this he's that yeah. and like but the people that grew up me and know me just like no Matt is the one that will fight in a heartbeat and it's not it's just it's not something I'm proud of. I'm not the toughest guy by any means but it's just the way I was raised and yeah. like my whole, like, just, I'm a big on respect. Like, respect me and I'm gonna respect you. You know what I mean? And like I said, I'm not the toughest guy, but we're all men at the end of the day. So even if I'm gonna take an L, like, you're not gonna disrespect because we'll, we'll probably go. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, so it's, yeah. just, it's just the way I, I grew up. I, I'm, I'm working on it. I hope that, <laughs> I hope that the Fisher fight is my last fight, but I just, you never know in life. That's true, that's true. You mentioned Derek Fisher, that, that whole fight. Now, you said recently you guys are cool now. Yeah, everybody. we're fine, yeah. So how did that kind of, because obviously that's a personal situation. How did uh -huh. it come to be where you could be like, forgive him, I guess, and be like, um, yo, we good? I just think the situation of, you know, Max and I separated. You know, I, I ended up divorcing her. I just think the situation ran its course. So I wasn't 
in love with her anymore. I mm -hmm. love her and I still love her. She's the mother of my children. I'm gonna, from that standpoint, there's always gonna be love, but just as far as like someone that I wanted to continue to grow with or grow old, it just wasn't there anymore. So when the situation, so even when you, <clears throat> even after we, fight, had, yeah, after we had were, split, you know. Okay. So that's the whole thing when people are like, well, you're jealous or Derek stole her from you or you, you're not over. It wasn't that. That had nothing, to, it had something to do with it, but it, what it was was, you know, you're around my kids without telling me. Mm -hmm. That's what, but you're in the house that I pay for, first of all, with my ex, mm -hmm. which is whatever. <laughs> but you're around my, my Isaiah and Carter. And you know, you know, because we were teammates, how much those boys mean yeah, to me. He knew him probably Yeah, as, he already. As a friend, Come on, yeah. man. Oh, he was there. We were teammates. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's my whole thing. So when I approached him, because <clears throat> we had seen each other several times, there was just no conversation. He would look down, look away, walk away, whatever. Because he would be he, at my did kids. Did he treat you differently? No, he, we he just cold? didn't speak. Oh, really? Because he, so he would be at my kids. Like, he would up? be at my kids' games. You know what I mean? So, because you know him and my ex were together still. Okay. So he'd be at my kids' games, and just there would be nothing. I'm just thinking, this is you know, at some point we're gonna oh, have to talk. Oh, this is since the fight. Since the you know, since the, the fight. fight. Since okay. Because I didn't know that's I, the, I, the day I found out was the day we fought. So had you seen him many? You know, like when he's dating your ex-wife, had you seen him? And yeah, no, just I, been I, like I, was I, cool, I've, like, I've seen him plenty of times uh, uh, because, like I said, I see him at my kids' games, but there was just no no conversation yeah. you know which was and, and to me what got me like what made me be like and I was cool with that like I wasn't tripping like it, it was what it was yeah. I'm not like keeping you guys from each other like we fought and I explained why we fought and that's what it was you know what I mean but just seeing him around and then my boys really took a liking to him you know what I mean and you know daddy I want we want you and Derek to be friends and he's a good guy and I knew Outside of the movie pulled, he was a cool dude. Like yeah. I said, we were teammates. Yeah. You know what I mean? And Fish was Fish was a cool dude. You know what I mean? So the fact that the boys liked him, and I was just like, I would probably saw him like seven to ten times. It was nothing. Wow. And so just one time after the boys' football game, I just stopped him. You know, and my ex was there too, and I just pulled him to the side and explained why I fought him, and he understood, and uh, he apologized. And you know, I said so I apologized for letting it escalate to a fight, but it just you know kind of was what it was. I, like I said, I explained. That the fact it wasn't the fact that it was my ex, it was the fact that you're in my house with my kids mm -hmm. and you don't mm -hmm. tell me. That's the whole thing. So, I mean, like I said, my th whole thing now is he and I are cool. I actually communicate better with him than I do with my ex. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I want them to be happy. You know, like I said, it's about my kids now. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So if he makes my kids happy, I'm happy. So, that, I mean, that's really wow, all that's, that is. That's, that's takes a lot, man. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I, and I hit him with some real stuff. Like, you're around my kids more than I am. You know what I mean? Like, I, that's how yeah. deep, like, I'm, I'm a man about it. You know what I mean? Like, you're a, the man figure in their life more, because the mom, Gloria has it more than I do. Yeah. So you're going to have to teach them how to be men and how to maneuver and, and discipline them in the right way. Like, I gave a lot of, considering everything that went down, like, yeah. I gave them a lot of respect from that standpoint. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. when I'm not around, you're the man around. I mean, that's how I really kept it with them. So, like I said, <laughs> I just want to co-parent and be happy and do everything possible to make these boys have the best childhood of their lives and grow up to be productive men. How close were you and Fish? I mean, were y'all just cool teammates? We were teammates. Were we were like cool. Boys? You know what I mean? Like, if you look back, like, he came to our events. You know what I mean? We met his wife. Yeah. Lori and his wife were cool. Like, it was, it was yeah. some ill, like, just... The unspoken rule you don't do. Yeah, can I, yeah. can nah, I say it's cool. Okay, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just something you don't do. You know what I mean? So we had hung out. You know, he was, he was, he was my, you know, he was my OG. Really, he was an older player on my team. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, and I'd always respected him before. There was always love before. Because, like I said, he's a stand-up dude. So when it went down, it was funny. But, like I said, it's, you can't help who you fall in love with or whatever yeah. the situation is. There's just a, a you, there's a special way to handle it. And neither of them handled it that way. So what I did happen. Yeah. Nah, that's 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 good, man. All right, so um your former one of your your former teammates, uh Austin Rivers. You called him a fake tough guy and arrogant. Why you feel that way? I don't remember calling him fake a fake tough guy. That's not not, not something I really say, but I okay. said I did say arrogant. And, and because he is. You know what I mean? And that's just who he is. He, I mean, if you ask him, I was the first one to put my arm around him uh, when he got to L.A. and just said, no, you, you need anything. You know, L.A. is so much more than basketball. And I, I mean, so I, obviously, I think Austin realized that now mm -hmm. I mean, you're getting hit every different direction every day because that's what people are doing. Like whether it's, you know, people that don't like you, people that like you, the media loves you, hates you. It's just a lot going on. The yeah. nightlife, like you have to really be able to focus and lock in. And that was just the one thing I put my arm around. I'm like, yo, this is L.A. is crazy. 
if you need anything, let me know. We could talk through it, have lunch, or whatever. So I was, so I did that. But just seeing him and being around him, it's just he's just an arrogant dude, and he rubs some people the wrong way. Like I didn't trip because he was my teammate. So like if he got into it, I got into it. I still mm -hmm. had his back to the fullest, just like I had everyone else's back. But just after not being on his team. And then seeing kind of the same way he carries himself and talking trash to players while he's hurt. Like, I, I just know, you know what I mean? I yeah. already know what that's about. So I see why them dudes were mad. Like, I get it. Yeah. It doesn't make him a bad, it's just who he is. Like I said, we were cool with teammates. I mean, you could ask him. And he, I ain't got nothing bad to say about him from that standpoint. But it's just, <clears throat> he carries himself with the arrogance that a lot of people don't like. Now, you were on the Clippers team when y'all beat Golden State. And then the next year, in the playoffs, the next year they start, they just go to a whole nother level. <clears throat> what was your, like, I, I thought y'all had championship type talent. We had a, a, there's no question. Our, our, the Clippers' biggest weakness was our mental toughness. Uh, physically, on paper, in the games, we could beat anybody. Mm. Our biggest obstacle and what held us back from a championship was our mental toughness. There was just too many, <clears throat> too many egos, um, some, some young acting, so some young acts. And, <clears throat> you know, the transition from Vinny to Doc. Yeah. Um, there was just things that, just, that didn't get ironed out. But if they were ironed out, there was no question that we were one of the most talented teams in the league during that time. Were you surprised when Chris left? Yeah. Um, mixed feelings, and I want to get to when Blake left too. Um, but you know, Chris just wanted to win. You know what I mean? And Chris is, I think, sometimes received the wrong way. But as just someone that you want to go out and compete with in, in, in the foxhole with, you want CP on your team. Um, so to see him, <clears throat> to see him go was tough. But at the same time now, when I talked to him, and I, I just saw his family a couple of weeks ago, like he looks so happy out there. Yeah, he does. And, I, and, I'm, and if, for, as a friend of his, I'm happy for him. You mean, but of like, there's three teams that really have a, a hold on my heart that I play for in the NBA, and it's the Lakers, Clippers, and Warriors. You know what right. I mean? So I'm always going to be fans of those teams. So to, to be a fan of the Clippers still, then I'm, now I'm done playing it, it would hurt me to see Chris go. But um, I think to even touch back to your point earlier, you know, playing with the passing point guard, I think DJ realized how important Chris was. Yeah. You know what I mean? The Clippers yeah. as a whole realized how important Chris was. You yeah. know what I mean? Because if he wasn't, Chris is someone that can take over the fourth quarter by himself and score 20, or he can make sure that we have a 40-point quarter as a team. Like, mm -hmm. Chris could do either or, and they don't have that no more. Yeah. You know, DeAndre's not getting those easy lobs that he took for granted, <laughs> but Chris would throw that yeah. shit like this. You know what I mean? Because Chris is a, a, a Hall of Fame once in a you know, lifetime type point guard. Now, you mentioned, Blake, uh, the trade from the Clippers. Were you shocked at that, upset about I was, that? Or? Same thing with Chris. Like, I'm just like, damn, as a Clipper fan, like, ah. But then, then you start thinking, too, on the business side of basketball and just basketball as a whole. I think, you know, Blake needed a, a breath of fresh air. Okay. You know what I mean? I think they had probably obviously reached the ceiling with the team they had. So from a business side of it, like, as a fan, I was hurt. Like I said, I'm a Clipper fan still. Yeah. But on the basketball side, I know I don't know if he wanted to go to Detroit because it's freezing. He's been in L.A. <laughs> his whole career. But he got a fresh start. You know, he looks like he's having fun again. He's smiling. He's out there playing well. And then for the Clippers, what they got back is they got nice pieces. Tobias yeah. Harris can really play. Avery Bradley can really play. Who else they get? They got one more person. Uh, though, the Avery and They got three Tobias. people, didn't they? Those are the main yeah. two, I believe. But those, like yeah, those, those guys, can, can really yeah. play. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think the trade worked out good for. But I think the Clippers are a better team now with okay. the guys they've added. Um, but like I said, as a fan, it was it was bittersweet to see him go. What was it like playing with Kobe? Uh, amazing, really cool, man. Especially because the way it came about. You know, uh, it started back. You know, at UCLA when he would come and work out and play and always just thinking, I remember UCLA, I was thinking like, damn, he's only a year and a half older than me. Like, I'm gonna have to be able to guard, you know, I'm gonna have to be able to handle that. When I'm yeah, at UCLA, yeah. I'm thinking that when I'm seeing, I remember the one year he broke his right hand. So he was up at UCLA doing all left-handed workouts. And that's the year he came back shooting left-handed all the time. Yeah, yeah. He was doing his whole workout left hand. I'm like, this dude's a monster. You know what I mean? So I was always like, kind of like, man, I gotta be ready for him. So he was someone my whole career that I locked in on and always wanted to battle with. Every time we went, <clears throat> whether I was playing a lot or got on for a couple minutes, 
we battled, you know what I mean? So it was always, I think there was a mutual respect there. Then uh, fast forward to Orlando, 2010, and people still talk about this in 2018, <laughs> but uh, you know, the ball fake thing. Yeah. And um, that was a crazy game, because that was a really good game. Like that was towards the end of the season, we were going back and forth, but he was just on his Kobe shit, like elbowing me and grabbing me and, doing dirty things and like the refs weren't calling and it was pissing me off. <laughs> so I just, you know, I was just, I was to the point where like, okay, we're about to fight. You know what I mean? It's just what it, yeah. was, it was. So when I took the ball out, if you watch me, I would, it wasn't premeditated or nothing. I literally just, I don't even know where it came from. I just really ball fake. But if you watch me, I'm looking at Vince come off this pit cause I'm trying to hit Vince for a back door on our inbounds play. But for some reason, just I guess my arms had a thing of their own and just <laughs> like faked it. You know what I mean? So once everything happened and I saw the film and saw that it came like within eyelashes of him and he didn't flinch, I'm like, that's a, that's a cold boy right there, boy. You know what I mean? But then, um, you know, then my, my situation in Orlando fell through and, uh, you know, he was someone that called me up like a couple of days in free agency, you know, and, and asked me if I wanted to be a Laker. And Lakers were my favorite team growing up. Yeah. I'm just like, damn, this is Kobe asking me if I want to be his teammate. Like, <laughs> hell yeah. Like, I was the biggest Magic Johnson fan, <clears throat> you know, and I remember Kobe saying, <clears throat> anyone crazy enough to f with me is crazy enough to play with me. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's how that started. And then I remember just one quick story about when we first went to Spain, um, because we were going back for Pal, <clears throat> we were playing over there. Everyone was taking their family. He was over there with his headphones on and his little, we had our cubby holes because we were flying overseas. And I, I thought he was rapping. I didn't know, because you know, he had that, yeah, that, yeah, that, rap that, that rap album. <laughs> but he was over there just jamming. So I thought he was rapping and I just got, and then I saw him doing stuff. So I was going to go, because I couldn't sleep. So I went over to see what he was doing. And he had a, a bunch of different courts drawn on this piece of paper. And he told me, I'm looking for where you guys are gonna be open out of the offense. So he says, I never look at the guy guarding me. I'm always looking at the help in the, in the half man that have their eyes on me. Wow. I'm like, wow. what the f <laughs> So he's, he, but he had 20 or 30 little courts with diagrams drawn up like where he can pass us the ball at. Wow. And that blew me away, man. I wow. just knew that he was just on a different level. You know what I mean? And then, you know, going out to Orange County and working out with them sometime in the summertime is early morning, you know, tracks, track, track sessions, uh, weight, you know, weight sessions. Like, he was completely dialed into basketball. Mm. You mm. know what I mean? And, and I think that's what, what made him so great. So his, because, you know, his work ethic, his competitiveness is like legendary. It's <clears throat> legit. It is yeah. not a myth. No, I went to his camp one time in Santa Barbara and me and him played these kids two on two. And he was like Kobe game seven against what? these 12 year olds, like blocking shots, dunking really? on I, I was like, yo, chill, bro. Like, what? <laughs> no, he was like, no, like, like nothing easy. And like, I was thinking like, these are young kids. Yeah. And wow. he was going, like I said, he was Kobe game seven out there, shot faking them and dunking. I was just like, I, was, <laughs> I just kind of sat back and just gave him the ball. I mean, like in the real game, I just gave him the ball every time and kind of watched him go to work. But it was just like, that's where his mind was always at. Like when he was between those lines, I don't give a f who I'm playing, like it's on. And wow. I love that about it. I remember, remember he had that commercial early in his career where he was putting some little boy who was maybe eight years old that he was playing against and he was blocking his shot and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's real. real. That's real. None, none fake about that. But look, man, it's been an honor talking with you. Man, Great stuff. Thank for you, real. man. Appreciate real. it. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Thank you for coming through, man.